Hello and welcome to another installment of Delaware State University Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is a show that we look at our perspectives of our faculty and staff experts looking at the things that are going on in the wide world as well as on things that are going on inside the campus of Delaware State University. But today we're looking outside the country and we're looking inside the country as well concerning this issue with Syria which is alleged to have launched a chemical weapons attack on August 21st that has injured or killed thousands of people. And now our president, President Barack Obama, has decided the appropriate response is a limited military response uh, in response to uh, the chemical attack. There are many people that believe that we should not do this. And today I have brought on the show Dr. Sam Huff, who is the George Washington Distinguished Professor here at Delaware State University and also the director of our Law Studies program. Dr. Huff, thank you for joining us okay. on the show today. Uh, to we've got a lot going on with this Syrian issue here. Uh, the president has called for a limited military response. Some people say this should not be our business. Meanwhile, he has tried to court Congress and he's trying to come up with a unified response to this. Um, Today, there's a lot of talk about some people in Congress not being willing to go forward with this military action. If Congress were not to approve this military action, what would be the consequences if President Obama would forge ahead without Congress's approval? Well, if the administration is committed to punishing Syria for the alleged use of chemical weapons and Congress doesn't approve, uh, the president uh, could still order a military strike under the auspices of uh, his commander-in-chief power, but that could risk in the most serious uh, ramifications impeachment, most likely by the House of Representatives, which is controlled by the Republicans. There are a number of other ramifications uh, there, uh, given that the president has backtracked from essentially a unilateral strike, which it looked like we were going to see last Friday at this time, to uh, getting Congress on board under the auspices of uh, both the War Power of Congress and the War Powers Act of 1973. And in that sense, he seems to want to make it legal. So to go outside that permission or non-permission seems to be problematic for him and the administration. Well, certainly we have some challenges here with this particular issue, but outside of this country, we have a lot of countries that are weighing in. Russia is clearly not in favor of us uh, uh, striking Syria. Um, Iran has weighed in today, and they've even told the militants in Iraq that they should consider attacking the American embassy and other American interests in Iraq should the United States attack Syria. What are some of the ramifications internationally if the United States takes this action? Well, we know, among other things, that Iran is contemplating and most likely well on the way to developing nuclear weapons. Uh, their position in regards to the United States and the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty is pretty clear. They're against that. They want to continue to develop them. And so uh, a the United States effort to punish Syria ostensibly has more than the message to Syria. It's a message to adversaries like Iran to not think about doing such things themselves or, as you mentioned, uh, trying to get their surrogates to attack U.S. interests. Um, we do see that uh, Russia has announced not only its opposition but yesterday during the G20 meeting uh, President Putin ordered an uh, aircraft carrier to a port in Syria, along with the ships that are already there. That sort of ratchets it up the, uh, the dare to the Obama administration to actually launch the strikes that they're proposing. So it certainly is problematic for a number of uh, other countries that the United States is constantly looking at, not to mention the other countries and the consequence of the Arab Spring in the Middle East. For a long time, we have believed ourselves to be a leading world power, and we believe that the rest of the world sees us this way as well. We've also considered countries like Britain to be a major world power as well. However, we saw in the vote in the Commons, uh, the British Commons, 
that they have voted not to be involved in a military action uh, against Syria. Um, and now we see our own debate over here and plenty of people kind of feeling the same way. What does this mean for our standing as a world power? Is it diminishing or, or how do you see that? Well, that's a good question. Since the end of the Cold War, and there has been a period where a lot of analysts would say the United States is the only superpower in the world. Others would certainly dispute that. But if you accept that label for the United States, then you must think in terms of the United States assisting in altruistic and humanitarian means and not just defending its own national security interests. And that's where the position of in, with regard to Syria comes in. The United States has indicated a number of times uh, that uh, chemical weapon use, such as what we've seen in world history in World War I by Germany, by Saddam Hussein in the Iraq War, uh, is not only against uh, international norms, but against civil civilization itself. So that deserves a special rebuke. And uh, as we are seeing, the Obama administration is trying to thread the needle by saying that that rebuke is going to be severe, and yet not something enough that's going to take us to war. Um, but we've seen uh, a number of folks uh, be against that because of the legacy of the Iraq uh, war, which started in 2003 and you know, st uh, has, w has wound down, but not before uh, 6,000 of our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan and perished and over 40,000 injured. We've got about 20 seconds left. Could this mean World War III? No, I don't believe it'll mean World War III, uh, but I do believe that uh, the idea of um, military uh, use in this case uh, has to be taken very carefully, especially when you consider that uh, napalm and white phosphorus have also been used in Syria, and they too are weapons that a lot of people think are repugnant and should be banned uh, from military use as well. Well, thank you, Dr. Huff, and okay. thank you for joining us for this installment of, of DSU Inside Perspective. Join us next time. Have a good day.